Hi, and welcome back to What The Heck, where today we'll be answering the question, what the heck is quasi-connectivity? Well, I'll tell ya. So before we formally define what quasi-connectivity or QC is, let's get acquainted with a couple of strange examples. So as you can see, on the left we have a piston and a solid block that is placed diagonally to it, with a lever that is on top of the solid block. Now, for those of you who don't really know what quasi-connectivity is, and aren't very familiar with it, you might think that when I flick this lever, it shouldn't affect this piston because, well, they're not directly connected. Well, and when I do so, you'd be right. But something interesting happens when you actually update a block next to this piston. As you can see, it actually powers despite being powered diagonally, and now you can update it as many times as you want and it will stay powered. You can also turn it off and it will require another update in order to realize that it's been unpowered. Same thing goes with this configuration on the right where you have a solid block that is two blocks above this piston. You can see as I flick this lever, it doesn't affect this piston at all until it is updated. And then when I power it off, same thing, and you need to manually update it so that it realizes that it's been powered off. So what's really going on here? Well, according to the wiki, quasi-connectivity is a property of dispensers, droppers, and pistons that allows them to be activated by anything that would activate the space above them, no matter what's actually in that space. So coming back into the game, it's pretty easy to see that when this block is powered, it would power something that would occupy this space above this piston, and same with this block right here. So at this point, you might be thinking, that's really weird behavior, right? I mean, it kind of looks like a bug, and you'd be right. However, according to the wiki, while quasi-connectivity can be difficult to work around sometimes and might seem like a bug, it is officially recognized as a feature that works as intended. Yeah, about that. That works as intended part is actually just the current verdict. It wasn't always like that. It's rumored that when Mojang was introducing the piston for the very first time, they retained the source code of the door, which can be activated by powering the top block. Seeing it like this makes it easier to see where these side effects may have come from. So back to these two, it does seem like they are working as intended, as in this bottom one is supposed to be powered diagonally like this, and this one is supposed to be powered like this. But it still doesn't change the fact that when we depower it or power it, we still need to supply both of these with a block update manually in order for it to realize that it's been powered or depowered, which is honestly quite cumbersome. Luckily, you can use other redstone components to provide block updates automatically to components that are supposed to be QC'd. So for example, this bottom piston right here is supposed to be QC'd by this block, and this block is going to be directly powering this piston. And what ends up happening is that because this piston fires, it automatically sends a block update to this piston down here, and it realizes at the same time that it is powered. So you can see, as I flick this lever, both of them extend at the same time, and when I flick this lever again, both of them retract at the same time as well. Now of course this piston doesn't have to be on top, of course it can be on the side as well, just as long as it's right next to this piston, like so. Note blocks do the exact same thing, and they are my preferred method of updating, although you can use any of these other ones like powered rails, activator rails, and even the bell, although obviously it's very noisy, and if you do choose to do this, I might have to report you to the redstone police. Just saying. Same thing goes with QC powering two blocks above, so we've got the piston here, we've got the note block here, we've got the bell here, and of course we've got the rails as well. Uh, they are on dispensers instead of pistons because they will pop off with the pistons. But as you can see, we've got the dispenser, oh my god, uh, with the powered rail here, and of course with the activator rail as well. And as mentioned before, this is the small list of things that can be QC powered. So that is the regular piston, the sticky piston, the dispenser, nice try, and the dropper. Ugh. Now having to use another redstone component to update the thing that you're QC powering is all fine and dandy, but there is a whole nother list of things that will auto update the thing that you're QC powering. So that would be the redstone dust, the redstone repeater, the redstone comparator, the redstone torch, whether it is placed diagonally or two blocks above, 
the actual lever itself, the actual button itself, a detector rail, any of the pressure plates, trap chests, and observers. Note that you don't have to use slabs here, you can use any transparent block uh, as well as glass as you can see here. But just a quick note about this exact setup here, if you turn this into a dot, then this will no longer work. And that's because as a dot, it is not supposed to be powering the block next to it. However, as a cross, it is supposed to be powering a block next to it. So you can see uh, that didn't update, but now it will. So there you go, fun little fact for you. So now you should know enough to explain what was going on at the top of the video with the teaser, where I basically powered this entire line of pistons and then removed the redstone blocks from top to bottom and then it stayed on. So I'll walk you through exactly what's happening. So while I'm placing down these redstone blocks, I think it is quite self-explanatory. It is being powered by the redstone block next to it. Now placing another redstone block, one block above that, is necessary and it'll become clear as to why that is in just a moment. So the removal of these redstone blocks is actually very important. So I'll walk you through what happens at each step of the process. So when you remove this bottom redstone block here, this bottom piston is no longer being directly powered by redstone block, but it is still being diagonally powered by this redstone block here, so it doesn't retract. Then when you remove this second redstone block, what ends up happening is that this bottom piston is no longer being powered at all, but it doesn't realize it because this piston has not retracted. Now, why hasn't this piston retracted even though we have removed this redstone block? Well, that's because this redstone block that is diagonal to it is QC powering it. Moving on to the third block, it's basically the same thing. You delete this one, and this one is no longer powered uh, directly, but it is still being powered diagonally by this redstone block here. And these two are no longer being powered at all, but haven't realized it yet because they haven't received an update. Moving on to the fourth block, you delete this one. And now this one is no longer receiving direct power, but it is still receiving QC power from this redstone block up here. And none of these three bottom pistons down below have realized that they're no longer being powered at all. And finally, when you remove this final block, this piston is no longer being QC powered, nor is it being powered at all, but it didn't receive an update next to it, so it doesn't realize that it's no longer being powered either. And so the end result is this entire stack of pistons that are not powered, but haven't realized that they've been depowered yet. So all you have to do to make this entire line retract is to update any one of these pistons and they will retract immediately. So that's a fun little parlor trick, but what makes QC so useful, and why do redstoners love it so much? Well, I'd like to direct your attention over to the piston wall. Say your goal was to power this entire wall of pistons at the same time. Well, without QC, you might do something like this. You might want to put down a line of blocks, maybe put repeaters down here, and then go ahead and put repeaters here, line of blocks behind that, Another line of blocks like this, repeaters here to power out oh, to power these blocks like that, and then more repeaters like this with more blocks behind it, and you can see it starts to get very, very cumbersome. But with the power of quasi connectivity, this can all be reduced down to a couple lines like this with redstone dust right on top of them. Then you can go ahead and just stair step up and connect these two, put down a lever power that and the entire wall of pistons is powered because these lines, uh, the second and fourth lines of pistons are being directly powered by these blocks and the first and third lines of pistons are being QC powered by this line of blocks and this line of blocks and these pistons and these pistons are being used to update these pistons and these pistons. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but with all of that explanation, I think you should be able to make sense of it. So from this example, you can see that QC can definitely make redstone a lot easier in some use cases, but it's probably not too hard to imagine that it could be quite inconvenient sometimes, and so you might need to learn how to avoid it as well, which is what we're going to get into next. Let's say for instance you want to power this top piston without powering this bottom piston at all. 
Well, then you can use transparent blocks like this and use QC to your advantage to actually avoid that scenario. So as you can see, the top piston is the only one that's being activated and you can go ahead and update this bottom piston as much as you want and you will see that it is not being powered in any way whatsoever, not even QC. So you can actually use QC to avoid QC if you're smart like this. And here we have an example of an RS Norlatch array. Now, if you don't know what that is, I did an episode of What the Heck on that, which you can catch on the top right right now. So you can come back here and activate any of the RS Norlatches that you want. And this line of redstone that's running on top of this line of glass is acting as your reset line, which is going to be bud powering these droppers down here without powering these droppers at all. You can see this exact mechanic in practice in the price management system in my boutique armor shop videos. And here's a vertical example of the same thing. So you can go ahead and activate any of the ones that you want and you can click this button to reset and it only powers this top layer of droppers and not the bottom layer of droppers at all. So with all that knowledge under your belt, I want to issue you a little bit of a challenge down in the comment section. Based on what you learned today, I want you to leave a comment. What piston numbers will be powered if I pull the lever? I'll pin the first person to get the correct answer. But yeah, that's basically all you need to know about quasi-connectivity. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and make sure to check out my other what the heck videos for more redstone basics. Bye for now.